Thank you so much for those that are in attendance this morning for carving out a little bit of your time uh, to hear about the state of our schools. This is an annual event that the Chamber has been thrilled to host for a good number of years now and uh, emphasizes a very important partnership that the business community has with our public school system here in Norman and it's a great relationship and a partnership that we are really proud to be part of. Before we get into our program and introduce our presenting sponsor today, I'd like to take a moment uh, to uh, just let everybody know about a couple of things that are on the horizon and then also recognize the rest of our sponsors. First, I know many of you are aware of and hopefully have already taken advantage of the Small Business Recovery Grant that the city has made available to small businesses. I would encourage you, if you uh, fit into the category of need and size, for you to consider applying for that grant. The city set aside a million dollars. The grants will be up to $10,000 each. You have until the 28th of December to submit your application. You can find a link to the application on the Chamber's website, normanchamber.com, or if you'd like to go straight to the city's website, you can find the application there. But please avail yourself of that, and uh, hopefully there'll be so much positive response that uh, the city council will, considering, will consider the additional $2 million they have to add to the, um, the first round of a million dollars. So, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to talk them into making the, that additional investment into our small businesses after the 28th. Okay, well, let's get into today's program and, and give me just a second here to, uh, to recognize our gracious sponsors. I'm gonna introduce Armstrong Bank in just a second, but uh, before I do that, I wanna recognize our centerpiece sponsor. Clearly we normally would be in person, so we still have that and we appreciate Walmart East uh, for, for filling in for in that spot today. We also wanna recognize our platinum sponsors, Manhattan Construction, Sports Talk Media, and More Norman Technology Center. We also have a great list of gold sponsors. They are Architects and Partnership, Bank First, Ide Bailey, First Fidelity Bank, First United Bank, MA Plus Architecture, Nelson Mazda, OG&E, and Sooner Cleaning and Restoration. I wanna just thank all of them for their continued commitment and investment in the chamber and importantly into our educational system. And then I'd like to take just a moment to uh, say a special thank you to Armstrong Bank for being our presenting sponsor. Uh, they have been with us from day one when we started this event nearly almost a decade ago. And so it's my pleasure right now to introduce to you the Armstrong Bank Norman Market President, my friend, Josh Edge. Josh, thanks so much. I'm going to kick it over to you. Thanks, Scott. I uh, just want to echo uh, Scott's uh, uh, remarks there about um, Armstrong Bank being a, a great partner um, with the, not only the Norman Chamber, but certainly uh, Norman Public Schools. And on behalf of Armstrong Bank, I want to welcome you to the 2020 State of the Schools. Um, I don't know how many people are actually watching out there, so I don't know if I should be nervous enough to picture everybody in their underwear. Uh, but so right now I just see Scott and uh, Dr. Nick. So um, I'm just going to pretend it's just the three of us having a conversation. Um, as Scott mentioned, uh, Armstrong um, and Republic before us were uh, very committed um, to sponsoring this event um, along with the chamber and just showing our commitment to the schools. And I'm proud uh, that Armstrong Bank is continuing that. Um, and then also seeing the great um, other community businesses and community partners um, that also value um, the schools and the chamber um, that have stepped up to sponsor this event. Um, a little bit about Armstrong. Um, everybody knows uh, we, that we were formerly a Republic Bank and Trust um, that had a strong commitment uh, to the Norman community, Cleveland County, uh, certainly the Chamber and certainly the schools. And, and I'm honored to know that um, Armstrong uh, maintains that same level of commitment um, to not only uh, the Norman schools, but uh, all the school districts across the state um, that we um, happen to be uh, in, in those communities. So we're just honored to continue that, um, that support. 
Um, I, I have a personal connection to um, not just the, the city, but the schools. Um, I grew up in Norman, uh, went to, all the, went to uh, Norman Public Schools my whole life. Uh, my wife teaches first grade um, at Eisenhower, and she's been there um, for 10 plus years. And then now our two boys um, attend Monroe. And so we love the schools. We love the district. Um, and we're just really honored to be here um, to continue that legacy, um, to see the schools uh, thrive. And um, we're, just, we're just so happy um, uh, uh, that they're doing so well. And then we have a guy like uh, Dr. Nick um, to lead us. Um, as as uh, uh, Scott was saying, Armstrong's been able to sponsor this event for a long time, um, so we're excited to be able to do that um, again in 2020. Uh, Dr. Nick um, so has been with the district for a while, so he is a very familiar name, uh, but he's been leading the district as the superintendent since uh, 2017, in July of 2017. And I'm sure that when he said he'd want to do this, he was thinking in three years he would love to lead through a pandemic um, with no real framework on how to do this. So I'm sure that um, when this is all over, um, he'll, uh, he'll sign the books that he's authored on um, how, to, how to run a school district in the uh, turbulent times that, that we're in. So, um, you know, Nick, everyone knows Nick's commitment to the school district, to education, um, to advancing um, education through technology, um, and through just the, the, co the continued commitment of connecting businesses in the community to the school. He understands um, and has made a concerted effort um, to making sure that um, it's not just the, the, the admin and the teachers leading the district, that it's the entire community stepping up um, to lead the district. And so his leadership has, um, has been seen through that for the last, obviously the last three years, um, but have been in the times before that. Everyone knows um, his commitment um, to, to seeing the education system in Norman um, improve year after year. So um, without further ado, uh, Dr. Nick, um, the floor is yours, my friend. Well, I, I appreciate it, Josh. And, and I'm going to take your words and that I'm just going to pretend I'm talking to the three of you as well. Uh, first time I've done a state of the schools. I've done some you know, town halls with Scott where it's Q&A, uh, but doing a town hall where I'm sitting here staring at myself uh, it is going to be challenging, but you know, you're, you're spot on. In, in 1994, when I came into the district at, at Irving as a, a teach, math teacher and coach, I never would have even, it never would have even crossed my mind. One, that I would have uh, become the superintendent. Dr. Gray was the superintendent at that time, or that I would uh, have led through and had the opportunity to, to work with teachers through um, a, a worldwide pandemic, you know, uh, just... Uh, something that has been incredibly challenging, but I, I just, uh, you know, feel blessed to have all the people around me, uh, the support of this community uh, through this, because without that, you know, um, Norman Public Schools, first of all, wouldn't be Norman Public Schools, uh, but we would not be where we are. So it's, it's not uh, about who's leading, it's, it's about who's supporting that person, and, and that is the community, the teachers, and, and just all the families. So Really, really want to thank you, Scott. I want to thank you in the chamber for uh, uh, staying the course and having this because although, you know, what we read a lot about everything that's going on in the news is around COVID. And, and I'm hoping that in this, I can share a lot of things that are non COVID, some of the celebrations, some of the great things happening with Norman Public Schools and just that a state of the schools minus COVID. I will touch on COVID. I will, uh, you know, obviously address some of those things. Uh, but, but really want to get into some of the celebrations uh, that we have um, around our students and faculty uh, as we do normally when we, we do the state of the schools. But to do that, uh, to start off, I want to um, do a few introductions. And first and foremost, I'd be remiss if I did not introduce our school board. Um, you can see their fine pictures here on the screen, and I'm, I'm assuming and I'm sure they're on the call somewhere out there. But uh, our president, Dirk O'Hara, uh, vice president, Dr. Dan Snell, Cindy Nashert, a school board member, Chad Vice, school board member, and Linda Sexton, school board member. Uh, these five people, you know, when we talk about going through what we've gone through uh, this last year, I, I can't thank them enough for the countless hours. Uh, the, their second and third full-time job has been uh, up here at this office working uh, with me, working with our cabinet, and just everybody to, to try to lay a plan out that, that we can, can work around. Uh, just incredible individuals, credible human beings, and all of them have a, a commitment for students and families and, and serving. So thank you all for, for the work you do. 
Also, I, I want to uh, recognize our cabinet. Um, wow, you, you talk about people putting in time and, and trying to, to uh, lead through uh, something that there, there is no playbook, there is no um, guide on how to do what we're doing. You know, um, all of us working with our consortiums and, and other uh, educators around the state, health professionals, our cabinet has done a tremendous job and continues to do a tremendous job I'm not going to go through and, and introduce everybody individually, but uh, you know who they are. I, I want to uh, thank them personally for their support of our students, families, and teachers. So um, with that being said, let's, let's jump into it. I think it's really important that we start off with some numbers, and I, I want to share those numbers with you. Um, and, and I'm hoping this technology works, um, that you can, can see these. Um, our enrollment, uh, this is a historical look at where Norman has been since 2015. For the most part, a pretty flat enrollment. Last year, we actually had our largest bump in enrollment than we've had in, in many years. We were up to 16,200 students. But to date, we're down over, I'll say more than 1,500 students. That number continues to, to go up and down. But that's significant, but I think that's also important to understand. Families are making choices during this time, and I respect each and every family for the choices they are making that uh, is best for them. And we are here to serve their students in any way that we possibly can. But I, I think it's important to share that enrollment number with you. Next, I kind of want to talk about what, what does that enrollment look like? Right now, of those students who are enrolled, that 14,400, 500 students that are enrolled, 66% of them are in our schools. I mean, 16, 66% of that 14,005 are actually coming to school. Then we have the other two areas, the virtual and blended uh, with percent, uh, percentages listed here. Just wanna kind of share that. That's a question I, I get often on, what, what do our numbers look like and how many are actually coming to school? Um, so, so that is our enrollment breakdown. And then next, as you know, um, if you've been in Norman for any, any amount of time, um, Norman is changing and it has continued to change. And that is reflected in our schools, especially with our demographics. And right now we've seen a, an actually a large growth in our Hispanic population. But I'm not going to read all these numbers to you, but we do have a very diverse school district and we celebrate that each and every day because I believe the more diverse your school district is, the more opportunities there are to learn. And, and we are seeing that in our district and we're working hard to one, address the needs of all the students, but two, provide the best possible education we can for all of our student, students, no matter where they come from or what their situation is. And, and that brings me to my next slide. And, and I will say, and, and I've said this before, this is something that probably I, I am the most excited about I, of anything that I've ever had a, a role in doing. You know, from uh, the time I was at Irving as a teacher and a coach to the, from the time I got uh, named as superintendent Diversity has been something that's been on my mind. The way I grew up, um, the friends I had, you know, it, it's, it's always important to, to recognize who's around, who's around you. Um, and, and so with that, this year we were able to hire an, our executive director of DEI, Ms. Stephanie Williams. Many of you know her. She's been an assistant principal at, at Whittier, at, at uh, Norman North, you know, State Assistant Principal of the Year, Principal at Longfellow, but also last year began running, or a year and a half ago, running our diversity and, and equity um, council. And this year I was able to hire her as the Executive Director of DEI for Norman Public Schools. And what, I, I, it's, I'm speechless on, on how excited I am about this. She is doing an incredible job. 
Um, her roles and what she's already started doing, she's uh, brought in training and awareness training for all of us, starting from the top down. Our board members are engaged and going through trainings. Our principals are going through trainings and she has a, a lot of things in store for this district. Her responsibilities, I just wanna share those to, to tell you how important this position is to our district, is her, first of all, she's going to help lead our recruitment cadre. We believe that our faculty should represent our students. Our students should be able to go to school and see people who look like them. So we're putting an emphasis on recruitment, recruitment of not only the best, but intentional recruitment when it, when it comes to diversity. Also professional development, I, I mentioned that she's working closely with Beth Albert and all of our principals on professional development, uh, working with our libraries and, and what materials we have in our buildings, but also she is looking at and auditing all of our district policies to make sure we're not missing anything that things aren't going through that, that shouldn't be going through. So Stephanie, I appreciate the work you're doing. I know all of us on, on cabinet appreciate the work, but the district does too, but an important position and we're, we're leading the way in this with public schools. So thank you. With that, moving on, student achievement. That's what we're about. And let's, let's talk about some of our celebrations in student achievement in Norman Public Schools. Historically, our students have done great, and this year is no exception. So I'm gonna fly through a, a few of the awards and accolades our students have received over, over the year. This year, we had 14 National Merit Scholarship, or sem semi-finalists, National Merit Scholar semi-finalists. As always, uh, one of the top districts in the state in the number of National Merit finalists. And, you know, this year being a little bit different, um, obviously students, incredibly talented students, great teachers in our district, but also parents are playing an even more crucial role in what's going on in their students' education, educational lives. So thank you to all those groups, great job. Next, McKinley Elementary, one of only six schools in the state of Oklahoma to be recognized as a blue ribbon school for their excellence and progress in closing the achievement gap. So my uh, shout out to Carol Emerson and her staff, uh, job well done. Great things going on across the district in all of our schools. This just happens to be one of them who got um, uh, identified as a blue ribbon school, one of six in the state, great job. Next, I wanna talk about Washington Elementary. They took first and second place in uh, meaningful economics and entrepreneurship competition. Great job. Also, we had eight students uh, receive the award of, uh, for arts excellence. Fantastic. Eight students also became Oklahoma Academic All-State recipients. And just so you know, there are only a hundred total across the state. So once again, Norm Public Schools, uh, up the top of that as well. And then Sophia Brooks receiving a Congressional Art Competition, is a competition award winner. And I wanna take a moment, this is so fabulous, I just wanna zoom in on that. How great is that? This is just one example of the incredible work our students are doing across the district, especially in the arts. So Sophia, fantastic. Fantastic. Let's see if I can get technology to take it back. There we go. And again, 2020 National Gold Councils of Excellence. Both of our high schools were recognized uh, with this award through student councils. And so as you can see, a lot of great things going on with our students across the district. Now I want to, to jump into giving a little bit of update of what's going on with our bond. And, and before I get into this, I, I want to personally thank all of you who had a role in uh, helping us pass uh, the 2019 bond. As you know, uh, with our bonds, we, we have different areas of emphasis as we, we work on passing a bond and implementing a bond. All that, those areas of emphasis are also areas of need. 
And it doesn't just happen by putting a bond on the ballot. It really takes a lot of work. So our, the Yes for Kids group and all the other partners that are out there that, that help support this bond initiative and get out there and share the facts about what's going on truly appreciate you and hopefully you're seeing the uh, that come to fruition across the district um, as always we try to over um, deliver on everything and so far we are doing that in all of these projects with that give you an update i know this may be a little hard to read but our timeline is uh, listed on the screen all the updates on all the different sites are can also be found on our website in regards to the bond but we are right on track with all the different projects. You can see all the schools listed here, and we still aim on finishing um, all the projects by the summer of 2022 uh, so that we're able to start the 22-23 school year with all the projects uh, completed. So uh, well on our way and uh, get, getting stuff done. Here are a few pictures of what's going on. Um, you know, in the bond, uh, I guess the primary focus of this last bond was student safety. And this is a picture at Longfellow of, of one of the safe rooms going up. And um, you know, this is happening across the district. So just wanted to give a glimpse of this. Once again, more photos are available on the website, but things are happening just about every one of our sites. As always, that does create a challenge when school is going on and you're, you're trying to um, have capital improvements, but uh, our teachers, our, our staff, um, our students, and, and our principals are, are working hard to try not to have that impact what's going on educationally in the buildings. Another uh, picture here I want to uh, bring to your attention. Uh, this is the Nancy O'Brien Center located on Norman North's campus. It's our fine arts building. Many of you have been in that building. Uh, incredible facility, but we are upgrading that as a part of the bond. And uh, once again, uh, I want to thank uh, the, uh, the, the Yes for Kids group uh, for this. Uh, the picture you see here is a uh, beam signing and uh, you know, kind of recognition of the work that's going on. Just so you know, this is the Nancy O'Brien facility. And in this picture, I'll zoom in on it in just a second. Um, you know, Nancy's family was here uh, for this beam signing. And also in the picture, Dr. Jim Gray's daughter was able to make it. Uh, Elaine Hale was not able to make it, um, but uh, she did get a signature on the beam. Uh, because of COVID, she, she uh, needed to stay home. But, and I, I bring up Elaine Hale because you know the uh, Professional Development Center that's located on Gray Street right now um, is named after Elaine Hale. And the Nancy O'Brien Center, the, the addition we're adding on is a professional development center. We will be relocating our professional development center to this facility. So two great friends will have their names associated with the same building and uh, just really excited for that. But the new home for the professional development center will be here. The other great thing about this facility, uh, when we get past all of this that we're going on, there will be numerous conference rooms that not only will we be able to use for professional development in our district, but also the community will be able to utilize those um, rooms for conferences um, and or just uh, meetings. Uh, right now, the only place we have in the district for that is here at the uh, ASC, uh, but this will be much larger than that with much more space. So really looking forward to not only utilizing this space internally, but also sharing it with the community. Dimensions Academy. Wow. That was a part of this last bond and a huge part. If you were able to um, uh, hear uh, any of my talks around the bond, we played a video about the impact of Dimensions Academy on students and, and the work they're doing at this school. And I want you to know that was an emphasis um, in this bond. And they are now living in a new building which is, is incredible. I, I become uh, choked up every time I, I talk about the dimensions because these students and, and staff have lived in a facility for many, many years since their inception that did not match um, 
the quality of work. It was not deserving of the work that was going on at Dimensions. And this new facility, which is a state-of-the-art state facility located behind Norman Regional Hospital off of Finley, um, is just that. If you haven't had an opportunity to see it, please do so. Please call over. We would love to set up a, a tour for you to, to go through Dimensions. But the work that is going on in this facility now equal each other. The work, the facility is very representative of the work going on. It's not quite done. We, we hope to have, uh, well, we will be closing on our safe room and gymnasium uh, in January, which is just adjacent to uh, the Dimensions Academy. Uh, there was a playground and it's, it's just an incredible place. And, and really of all the work we're doing in the bond, this is the shining star for students in this district. Um, as the state continues to cut funding for programs such as this, we continue to invest in that because we know the impact that alternative education, specifically Dimensions Academy, has on students, has on students that are gonna be in this community as adults in the future. So thank you for that. Okay, now let's talk about some of the staff. Let's talk about some of the people who make all of this possible, our teachers, our teachers and staff across the district. Now, I'm just gonna go through a few of them, just like the students, so many more awards out there. I just don't have time to go through all of them. Same here, but I do want to recognize a few of our staff members that are doing incredible things. First off, Jess Jessica Eschbach. 2021 Oklahoma Teacher of the Year finalist, also the District Teacher of the Year, obviously, but she is one of 12 finalists for the State Teacher of the Year. Incredible, incredible honor, incredible, incredible person, great teacher, and wherever she serves, she is, she is doing great things. Also want to shout out and give kudos to all the District Teachers of the Years of the Year who are if you didn't know, elected by their peers at each site. So congratulations to all the teachers of the year for Norman Public Schools. And then a shout out to Jessica Eschbach for making it as one of the top 12 in the state. Great job. Next, Jill Markman, Oklahoma History Teacher of the Year. Alice Nan, Oklahoma Foreign Language Teacher of the Year. Tari Simmons, Oklahoma Secondary Art Teacher, Educator of the Year. Missy Smith, Oklahoma School Counselor of the Year. Martha Pingburn, Oklahoma School Librarian's Polly Clark Award winner. Loretta Coker, Red Earth Festival Best in Show. And Diane Wood, Donna Gradell Fund for Teacher uh, Fellowship Award winner. Once again, great things going on individually with our teachers across the district. Once again, this is just a snapshot of some of the awards and recognitions our staff is getting. But did you hear all the of the year awards that have been identified for Norman Public Schools? That just kind of tells you the quality of teachers that choose to serve the students of Norman Public Schools. Next, I wanna recognize um, a, a lot of people, but first of all, on, as, as you know, Norman Public Schools has an ongoing commitment to energy conservation, something we, we've been doing for years, trying to you know, put the best fixtures in our schools and, and be incredibly conscious with um, how we utilize our utilities, um, uh, not only for the cost savings, but the benefit for the environment and the world. And, you know, this just recently at our board meeting, uh, we had a proposition just for this. And I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Sarah Chan and Laura Vaughn, who actually from the teacher side have really been leading this charge, trying to find every way they can and we can possibly become better stewards of, of what we're doing. So thank you. This was just Monday night at the board meeting. Um, so a, a great time to celebrate. 
Also, I want to spotlight a couple of employees. Uh, so this is Cameron Sargent. Um, Cameron is a, a transportation employee and, uh, you know, he's just one example of teachers going about, above and beyond. He saw a need at Monroe Elementary and he volunteered his time off between his, his routes at Monroe for four days in a row. That is great. We really appreciate you, Cameron, and thank you for the work you do. But that's just one example. Next, I want to spotlight Curtis Massey. Curtis is a, is a teacher's assistant at Eisenhower, as you can see behind him in the picture. Um, there was one day when, you know, he noticed something. He noticed that a student had a flat tire on her bicycle. Curtis didn't just say, hey, do you want to call your parents, see if someone can come pick you up? Do we want to do something? No. What Curtis did was he walked her home and carried her bicycle for her. Just another example of the heart our teachers and our staff have for kiddos. So thank you, Curtis, for that great job. And once again, just another example of great things going on with our staff members. Finally, with staff, uh, two ladies I want to recognize, Courtney Williams, who is an RN uh, with us and works at the district uh, health office, and Nan Schumann. Um, both of these ladies were uh, selected for the CDC leadership program for COVID-19 and, and our response. Um, I just really want to, to thank them for their work as, they, as we continue to work through this pandemic, but I also want to take a moment to thank all of our our health uh, professionals, and led by Beth Roberson in our district. Um, wow, what, what a job they, they have done. And, and you know, we, we talk about the work our people are doing in our district, um, but I also mentioned the work could not be done without um, the partnerships in our district. And, you know, um, in our district, for many years, I believe we were probably the first in the state and one of the few in the nation that had nurses at every one of our sites. And if it wasn't for the Norman Regional Health Foundation and Norman Regional Hospital, we wouldn't have nurses at every one of our sites. They have been an incredible partner. They help us fund nurses across the district. So just uh, really a shout out, but thank you, Courtney and Nan. Great job and great work as they continue to work with us um, on how we're addressing COVID across the district. With that, let's talk about COVID-19 uh, just, just a bit. I uh, don't want to dwell on it, but um, just want to once again thank Norman Regional um, and the foundation and, and all of those in the health community, um, the Cleveland County Health Department and, and just everybody for not only waiting on and helping us when we ask questions, um, uh, pushing in and giving us information proactively and, and helping us work through this uh, for the benefit of our students, families, and, and staff. So we are, as you know, continued, our, our focus is on providing opportunities for all of our students. And, and some of the things we're doing in our district look a little bit different. And I'm going to zoom in on, on this. This is, you know, we are one of the first districts in the state. From the very beginning, we mandated masks in our district. But how does that work in different areas? Uh, a lot of people ask. Well, you know, with the leadership of Dr. Benson and our fine arts program, T.D. O'Hara with our athletics, we're able to find unique ways to allow our students to participate while um, being safe. If you notice here, you have a flute player, you have a saxophone, you have all the different instruments, and there are different masks made for each one of these instruments. This is a slit that the um, you know, flute can go through. Same here with the saxophone, but if you see on the end of the saxophone, there's also a cover there. So being creative and, and implementing and purchasing the tools we need to try to keep our students and staff as safe as we possibly can. So just new and inventive ways of, of doing that. And these things are changing all the time and we're trying our best to stay on top of them. But once again, it goes back to partners helping us, keeping us focused on the new stuff that is out there so that we can implement those things. So 
Another thing, if you remember, we have a partnership with Grace Living where we have a pre -K, two pre-K programs at, um, at Grace Living Center. Um, last year, that cut, got cut really short. Um, but the impact that program not only has on, on the little biddies, but the grands, the, 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 the residents at Grace Living uh, is incredible. And it, it's something that we are committed to continuing and right now we're having to do that in a very safe way. This photograph so, shows some of the ways that, that the, the grands and the littles are connecting through windows. This was Halloween. Um, and, and I will say tomorrow there may or may not be a six foot six Santa Claus greeting people um, at Grace Living. Don't know. I, it's one of my jokes. You know, I, typically I don't get a response just like on Zoom. I don't know if that went over well or not, but uh, you may or may not see a six foot six Santa Claus at, at Grace Living tomorrow greeting students as they come off the bus and, and waving at the grands um, at, at Grace Living. So a program that we're committed to, huge impact on students and, and the, the residents and, and something we would love to expand as well. Now let's talk about testing. I mentioned Beth Roberson and her leadership of all the, the health professionals. I've, I've recognized um, the, uh, the health professionals in our community, the, the, the hospital um, and, and other groups for, for their help. But you know, one thing we are doing in our district is we're providing rapid antigen testing for all of our staff. We just did that, tested over six or 700 uh, staff members just a day or two ago incredible process. Our RNs, our nurses are, are doing that. But also we have the ability, um, our nurses were trained by the people at EMI uh, to, to administer uh, PCR testing to those who are symptomatic, meaning if someone has symptoms, student or staff, while at school, if they get those symptoms before they leave, we can administer the PCR test. What that does is, you know, as that person goes home, it, it allows them to go home and not have to make another stop, not have to make another appointment to go get tested. We can test them at their school. So once again, the leadership of our staff, the partnerships in this community make that possible. So um, just wanted to kind of let everybody know we are doing that in our school district. COVID has an impact across our district in academics. Everybody knows this. If you have children in our district, you, you feel that impact. And um, I want you to know our staff is working hard. Our principals are working hard. Our curriculum coordinators are working hard to identify individual students and where their gaps are and addressing them. And I promise you this picture is not me addressing individual gaps. This is me doing what I love to do is going out and reading to elementary kiddos. And, and you know what, the kiddos are great. Uh, at the elementary schools, you walk in, their masks are on, you can see them in this picture. And I got to read to them. I've been able to do this in, in a few classes this year. And you know, that, that's what lights my fire is, is seeing the kids' eyes in person. Um, I don't know how good of a, a reader I am, um, but I, I truly enjoy getting to see them and, and engaging with the students. So um, all that being said, we know there are gaps. We know there are challenges. Um, teachers are giving students grace. Students are giving teachers grace in this crazy time. Families are giving teachers grace. And you know, what I've told my teachers is we have to give each other grace as well. You have to give yourself grace in these times because it is an incredibly anxious time, stressful time, fearful time to be an educator in a classroom with people coming in and out. And I'm so thankful that our teachers are in the buildings serving our students during this time. And we are going to get through this and we're going to do right by our families and our, our students. And as the district, we're going to do right by our teachers. So our teachers are getting trained. We're working on this. Is it all going to get fixed in one year? Nope, absolutely not. But we are working hard to identify gaps and work with students on an individual basis as we always have. Next, during COVID, as many of you know, you've seen it in the paper, you've seen it around. We, we fed students uh, 18 years and younger um, all summer, you know, tens of thousands of meals a week. 
We are continuing to do that. If you did not know, we're providing free breakfast and lunch to all students at our schools, all at all schools, but also we have a pickup drop off for maybe those who are remote or virtual. And it, all they have to do is, is come by and pick them up on our website. They can go in and pre-order uh, the food and uh, it'll be available for pickup as you, you see here. So we're so happy to be able to do this. As you know, um, during this time, um, sometimes neglect, a lot of neglect happens when, when people aren't at school or, or you know, people are losing their jobs and, and being able to provide free food for children 18 and under um, means a lot. And, and hopefully we're helping parents out in doing this, but more importantly, and uh, making sure our students are, are able to stay healthy. And I mentioned this earlier, but our teachers are working harder than they ever have. There's not one of our teachers I know of who went to school to be a virtual teacher. There's not one of them who went to school to learn how to teach virtual or remote and in person at the same time. But I tell you what, they are doing that. They are working as hard as they can. The expectations, as I've gone around to all our sites, um, um, I've made it to over half of them, been in front of over 800 faculty members so far in the last couple of weeks talking to them. The expectations they have for themselves are higher than you would ever imagine. And that is probably the most challenging piece in all of this. Having an expectation here, seeing where the kids are and the families are, and, and, make, and trying to get everybody to those high expectations, that's really tough. That's when we have the conversation around, give yourself grace, this is a tough time. Keep your high expectations, we have them as well. But also know we have to meet people where they are. And at the end of the day, we all just have to do our very, very best. And that's where we are. And then we do that every day and it will make a difference in the lives of our students. But it is incredibly taxing is incredibly hard. Teaching in a normal year, I will, and you business people in the business uh, sector have heard me say this, it's the hardest job there is, period. Teaching to the most critical audience, giving a presentation every hour on the hour to the most critical audience there is, knowing that that audience is gonna go home and share with their parents their perception on what went on in class. And then you may or may not hear from them. That is tough in a normal year. Add COVID on it, add the other variables. It is, it is challenging and um, we just need to continue to work together as a community, as a school district to support each other and we will get through this together. We're seeing that already. With that being said, if you would like to become a guest teacher, that's you know uh, one of the challenges we have right now is getting enough substitutes because we do have quarantines taking place. We do have people who are having to miss school and getting substitutes or guest teachers in our buildings has been really hard. Here's something we've done that no other district has done and it doesn't always work to, to throw money at things, not that we have a whole lot of money to throw at things. Uh, you have to have people to, to accept, but we have raised our guest teacher rates um, for certified teachers to $100 a day and for non-certified to $85 a, way, a day. So maybe we can uh, get some more people interested. I, we've already seen an uptick this week in, in more people signing up to be guest teachers. So we are trying to do everything we can. If you want to be a guest teacher, if you want to give back, if you have the time, please sign up, go to our website, reach out to our human resources department, and we will get you moving in, in that area. But as partners in education, if there's something you want to do, this is, this is a great, a great opportunity. Okay, partnerships. So many partners. I, I, in, in person, we typically have a screen that has every partner listed up there that we have and just, just don't have the ability to do that through Zoom. So you know who you are if you're a partner. I want to thank all of you. I do want to give a shout out to a couple. I've already mentioned a, a few through uh, the presentation, but um, without partners, we would not be able to do what we do in a regular year, but especially in a pandemic uh, year. But I do want to um, recognize the Norman Public Schools Foundation, who has been around for quite a long time. They continue to invest 
in our classrooms and our teachers um, at a minimum. They, that's their primary goal, but they do so much more. So if, if you feel the need, please, 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 uh, your money's put to, to good use, please invest in the Norman Public Schools Foundation. I do, I encourage everybody to, and, and they, are, they, they work with us side by side to make sure our teachers have the resources they have. And with that said, rolling out tomorrow, because of Norman Public Schools Foundation being our lead sponsor on this, our Norman Learning Bus rolls out tomorrow. Once again, there may or may not be a six foot six, very sweaty Santa at this one as well after being at Grace Living, I, I don't know. But um, this is happening tomorrow and uh, then this bus is gonna hit the road and you will see it around the community and this is exactly what it looks like and um, it's, it's an incredible thing. We, we've been waiting for this for quite a while. Everyone who's worked on this um, is incredibly excited. And uh, if you wanna see it, just reach out to Alicia Leafmaster or Ann Rosales, um, and, and they'll let you know where it is and where it's gonna be stopped or parked in, in uh, beginning this winter break. So uh, look for it, it's a great thing. And with that, I want to end with partners in education in the Norman Chamber. Um, without them, so many things uh, wouldn't come together. Such a conduit, such a, connect, a connector for the Norman Public Schools and the business community. Scott, with your leadership and, and everyone else who works with you, um, really, really appreciate the work you do. Really appreciate your support, uh, especially in tough times. It's easy to support in, in hard, uh, easy times but it's, it's, it's tough to support when, when it's hard times, not just schools, but everything that's going on in the world, but especially this community. So thank you for your leadership and, and thank you for being such a great partner and allowing me to share some of the great things and real things that are going on in Norman Public Schools. With that, thank you very much. And Scott, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, Dr. Nick, thank you so much. And uh, what a great time to celebrate Norman Public Schools. And I know that uh, COVID-19 is top of mind for all of us. Um, we're all working and doing our best to try to battle that and do it in a smart way. And so I'm, I'm glad, Nick, that you, uh, you mentioned what's happening in our schools in that regard. As a parent, I, I see it every day um, and, and understand uh, how you're trying to do your best to address that. But I'm also encouraged because I'm glad that you mentioned and gave us an update on the success we're seeing with the bond package. Uh, that was another great opportunity for our community to come together, uh, celebrate our children, our teachers and staff for our system and, uh, and build on what the great things that you guys are doing on a daily basis. And then also, uh, I'm not surprised, but I'm glad to see the uh, state and national recognition that many of our students and staff are receiving. Um, it happen, I know it happens every year, but I think it's important, particularly in today's environment, that we take a moment uh, just to recognize the success, uh, successes of Norman Public Schools. So thank you uh, for sharing that. Uh, Nick, one little, um, one little hot button question I want to ask you before we wrap up, uh, because I know it's probably on top of mind for everybody. Uh, we have a week and, and a few days before Christmas break. Everybody's anxious and looking forward to that. Uh, what do you think this next spring looks like for the district uh, moving forward? Do you see any, any changes um, in the way things are going to be or, or what, you know, what, what's on your mind right now in that regard as you, as you plan and prepare for the, for the coming spring semester? Yeah, sure. Um, optimism. I would love for it to all just go back to normal um, and be good. And, and, and that would be fantastic. But it truly um, those of you who have kiddos in the school know that we've sent out um, surveys asking you, you know, what are your plans? for the spring semester? What are your plans? Because that really um, drives what we do in Norman Public Schools, the, the parents and the students. So if you haven't filled out or notified your school on, on what enrollment um, path you wanna take, uh, please do, it's not too late because that truly does uh, direct what we're doing. But with that said, 
you know, uh, we learned a lot over this first semester. Um, we made mistakes um, at all levels and, and we've tried to get better. Uh, but at those. So I, I you know, we're going to continue on. We're still going to provide uh, virtual education. We're still going to provide remote opportunities and, and in person opportunities, but we hope to get better. Each one of our school sites, I, you know, I, I share with my sites, I truly believe in site leadership. And that's not principal leadership, that's teacher leadership at the sites and, and what is working and what is not. So to say, every site's going to do it exactly the same? I, I don't think so. What's going to work for their site based on their enrollment in their neighborhood and, and their community? Um, so you may see some changes at different sites on how different things are offered, uh, but at the end of the day, we're going to do our best, Scott, to, to meet every student and every family where they are uh, and provide the best options we, we can uh, for them. So we're going to keep on keeping on going into next year. Obviously, we're going to learn a lot. We've learned some things that we're going to keep going uh, with into next year that um, when we're all back to normal for sure that, you know, options, parents and families want options. That's that's the way of the world now. And we will continue to offer options uh, for families. But we also know that in person teaching is the most effective without a doubt. You know, there's no no reason why when you look at virtual education across the state, across the nation, you're looking at 40 and 50% graduation rates. And those are in good years. Those are non COVID years. And a lot of families are feeling that and how hard it is to get a good education and to excel virtually. Some do, but not all and the majority don't. And that our goal is to get as many back in person safely as we possibly can. Excellent. Excellent. Well, as, as a parent, I can tell you that every day when I chat with my kids and get an update on, on what's happening in their classroom, uh, the, our teachers, they're succeeding in educating and growing, helping our kids grow. Um, I see it personally every day as I talk to my own children and am so impressed with, um, with how you guys are maneuvering and getting through this very challenging time. And I know that, that uh, you share the sentiment with me that, that we hope this time of year, the biggest decision you have to make is whether or not you're going to close schools for snow and ice as opposed to something else. So I wish for those snow and ice days, Scott. Uh, yeah, we had one in October, right? So uh, that, that was great. But yeah. hey, can I say one thing? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we talk about the teachers and, and doing a great job and, and absolutely. And those of you who are parents and, and, and community members, think a teacher, they are doing hard work. I know everybody is. I know frontline workers are. Our teachers are essentially frontline workers too. And they are front lines serving students so the rest of the world can continue to operate as well. So please think a teacher or two or 10 or 1200. Well, I think that's a great way to end our conversation in this season of, of Thanksgiving, uh, that we, we can all do that. And that's the least we can do to show our appreciation for our educators uh, that, that we all so love and appreciate. So before we wrap up, uh, let me again take a moment to, uh, to thank all of our generous sponsors. Uh, we have our gold sponsors, Sooner, Restora Sooner Cleaning and Restoration, OG&E, Nelson Mazda, MA Plus Architecture, First United Bank, First Fidelity Bank, Ide Bailey, Bank and Architecture and Sponsorship, our Platinum Sponsors, Manhattan Construction, Sports Talk Media, and More Norman Technology Center, our Centerpiece Sponsor, Walmart East, and then our Presenting Sponsor, again, Josh, thank you, the entire team at Armstrong Bank. You guys have been with us from day one when we started this, and we appreciate your continued commitment. To all of our sponsors, thank you. And uh, as for all of our chamber, mem chamber members that tuned in today, if we can do anything to help you throughout this holiday season or as we approach the new year, please don't hesitate to give us a call or shoot us an email. We're all in these challenging times together and we're going to get through it. So Nick, thank you again for your time and your entire team. We appreciate each and every one of you. Everybody take care and have a great rest of the week.